Here's the fuel pump. We've got half a tank of gas. And then she's alive and running on all six. I can hear it. Alternator is really not charging. <laughs> All right, here's our alternators here. So here's the old one that was on it. We've had this out before, but it's an OEM Denso unit, but it's a junkyard unit off of a 93 Voyager. So they've replaced it once. Sometimes it spins okay, but it's all gummed up if you look, it's all greasy. Okay, I got the new switch in. So the best way to get it is get your ratchet in here after you drop the column. <laughs> guys so we today got ourselves a new alternator in from the 94 thank you very much we had the steering column apart we completely took it apart to fix this high beam switch and then we thought the column was broke when really it wasn't so that's cool and then I uh, cleaned off the steering wheel before I put it back in I haven't showed you guys this stuff I took some super clean and it just ate that grease off but you can see how it's stained here and also wore out, but it's definitely better than the grease and it doesn't feel sticky anymore, so that's nice. And then I just rebuilt the uh, rear wheel bearings. I put all new races, all new bearings in it. One side had SKP, I believe it was the driver's side. The passenger side had a mix of Timken and Koyo stuff. So you know how that be. And now we're gonna go for a ride, see if we took away some of the shake. I know a lot of the shakes in the front end, but we'll see if it helped and then we'll readjust those wheel bearings, make sure they're torqued properly or the, set the preload, I suppose. And then I think I'm gonna get it up in the air and I'm gonna shake down the front end. I'm 
probably won't bring you in on that, but I'm going to shake down the front end, see if I can find anything loose. I'm sure I will because something's, something's loose. And then I will get those parts ordered, and we will look to do some more work on this van probably next week. Depending on how bad the shake is, I kind of want to drive it to work tomorrow, so we'll see. Anyway, we got oil pressure, got charging, we've got fuel, and we've got AC. I did charge up that AC, so that's nice. And I'm going to go for test drive. Alright, so I think we found our shake. That U-joint is absolutely shot. So this is for the half shaft going to the passenger side CV axle. That is absolutely shot. Problem number one. All right, and problem, yeah, ready. Problem number two. This strut is bent. Turn it faster, please. And all the way. Look at that, you can see it teeter. Now if we go to the other side. Yeah, no, I'm just gonna show a comparison. Do this side. That side's solid, I think. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna move a little bit. Yeah, the, the, obviously they move, but this one's moving kind of excessive, and you can hear it up in this bearing. Yeah. Do it again a little more. Yeah, you hear that? It, something's not right there. All right, guys. So I ordered two Master Pro uh, hub assemblies for the 90 Caravan, and when I went in today, they couldn't find the one box. And as you can see, one box is not like the other. So we bought two Master Pros, right? So we get a this one's marked Precision, but it's an old National box. And look at the date code on that bad boy. 2002 so that's an old national bearing right there that's 22 years old so that's a fun part right there uh, that's hilarious usually you only see that type of parts from rock auto but getting one from o'reilly that one's been on the shelf a while oh well, this came in the mail today we're gonna make this van politically correct now There we go, that's a little better. Well, hey guys, welcome back. I don't know if we'll be in the middle of a clip or what, but we uh, today we're out here. Yeah, I've got blue van, I got space cleaned up here so we're not blocking the whole front of the garage. But we are gonna start work on, once again, redoing the front suspension with uh, shocks and struts that aren't bad out of the box, or 30 years old for that matter. But we're also going to do the rack and pinion, which requires dropping the front cradle and everything, and it's gonna be fun. So, I'm gonna make sure I had enough space here, do it out in the open, because it'll probably be tore apart for a week or two at a time. We'll see, we'll see how quick it comes apart, how quick it goes back together. But I suppose we'll document how many miles it's got on it. So it's got 275, 211 miles on the clock when we are going to be putting a new rack and pinion in it, which comes with two new inner tie rods. So then both the outers that I already done, hopefully we can save those. So it'll have all new steering components in it. Uh, and then we're gonna also, while we've got the rack dropped, it makes the power steering pump a lot easier to do. We're gonna put that new one in it that I was originally gonna put in it before I put the pulley on backwards and then had to put the used one in it off of that motor that was, it's out of a 91 or a 92 caravan, but that pump leaks. So we're gonna replace all that. And we'll see what else we find, sway bar bushings, you know, that sort of stuff. Oh, and then we also got to do the CV, or not not the CV, but the uh, the U-joint on the intermediate shaft. And then I've got the new, what do you want to call it, carrier bearing is what it says on the box right there. I've got two different flavors of carrier bearing. So I had this one ordered on Rock Auto. Didn't seem like it was going to arrive in time, so I went to O'Reilly and got that. That was actually like 19 bucks at O'Reilly, which is amazing. In fact, the guy at the counter is like, there's no way this is that cheap. And I was like, well, it is, but... So we have that one, that's an OEM style, I believe. And this is like a new upgraded styling. We'll, we'll see, I'll, I'll have them both and I'll compare them to the original, I'll see what I put in, but I've got them both. And then we've also got new uh, wheel hubs and bearings. Those are 
those are going to be fun. Uh, technically it's pressed on, but those are already pressed onto those new hubs, so hopefully we don't have any issues. We're going to look at replacing those since we've got it all tore apart. Uh, it's the perfect time to do it. I got, I think I got some axle seals down there and stuff too, because we'll have the CVs popped. I don't remember if I put axle seals in it or not. We'll just check. Those are the old center sway bar bushings off of the 93. They were in decent shape, so I hung on to them, because we'll see what these ones look like. And then we've also, like I said, got the rack pinion back there, the new KYB struts. So that should uh, should sum up all the work we're doing. Might as well wire in that new oil pressure switch while we're in there, if I remember. It's not a big deal otherwise. But I have it running here. Just figured I shouldn't be warming it up because I got to work under it. But I'm going to get it jacked up in the air, get the tires off. We'll see how much farther I go from there. I don't know. It's about the end of the day on my second day off here. So I don't know how much more work I want to do. But we're going to get it ready anyway. So we got tires off now on both sides, but to do the hubs, we got to pull these brakes apart. So we're going to pop the calipers off, find somewhere to hang them with a zip tie. Can't hang them on the struts because the struts got to go. And then we got to pop the outer tie rods off of the spindles as well. And if we're going to drop that kind of cradle subframe, I think... Well, I guess you could leave the ball joint in because the whole spindle will be disconnected from everything, so that'll be fine. Leave the control arms hooked up. Yeah, so that's what we got to do on both sides. Tie rods, brakes, axle nut. That would have been good to do before I took the tires off, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, and then struts, and boom, that's that's it. And the sway bar bushings are, I think the center ones are the same as the 93, maybe? Maybe not, I don't think so. I think these bushings, these are like a square bushing, but they're all bad. They're all really, really bad. So this needs new sway bar bushings, naturally. What else did I figure it needed? There was something else. Uh, I was going to put a fuel filter on it because the hose on the end of the fuel filter is pretty rotten. I was looking at the CVs. I thought I replaced these. Can you guys remind me if I did or not? If I didn't, I'm going to. If I did, I'll leave it alone. But it sure looks like those haven't been replaced. You know, so I probably will. Otherwise, ball joints are all new and everything. So, that's good. Brakes looking like they're working great. All new calipers and everything. New pads. New rotors. Hoses and everything. That's all new. All right, so we're uh, soldering the new oil pressure switch on. Here's the old one. As you can see, the connector's broke, and these guys are pretty loose in here. So these ones these ones don't move. And then I pop this little red piece out here, and I put a little bend on the contacts in there. So hopefully it grabs better on top of having a clip. Anyway, I got these heat shrink solder joints here. So I got them stripped here, and I got it cut and stripped there. So we'll just slide it over, twist them, push this over, and then I just got a lighter here. That's what I use to go and just you just watch it till the solder liquefies and that's it well new plug is all back in got all the wire connector and cable protector back on taped all up so let's see if we got oil pressure come on key there we go cage comes to life Slowly but surely, it goes to where it should be. Let's give it a rev here. See, once we get towards three grand, goes up nice and high. Stumbles a little bit and then goes back to where it should be. Look at that, we got oil pressure.
well we got the uh, speedo drive out of the intermediate here in the transmission. It's just one 10 mil bolt up there. So we're going to pull the whole intermediate out with that CB because I can't get it to break loose while on the vehicle. Well, I'm done for the night, and who knows, depends on how busy I am. I got to drop Gray Van off at the alignment shop. It's out in front of Eggplant tomorrow afternoon. But uh, we'll see if we work on this tomorrow after work or whenever. But I'm going to order some parts up. I didn't order the CV axles for some reason because I thought I'd already done them. Apparently, I didn't. Those were old. So I got to order those up. Uh, there were two other things I had to order. Uh, I was going to order the fuel filter and something else, whatever. Oh, the bushings for the sway bar. But here's what we got done. So we got our intermediate shaft out, carrier bearings out. I need to figure out how that comes apart still, but we'll get there. This um, nut dropped out when I took this bracket, which you're supposed to take this bracket. It unbolts with a 10 and a 13 from the carrier bearing like bracket here. And then, then you can unbolt it from the body with, I think... 15s or 13s or something and this bracket comes with it because one of them goes through that but uh yeah it would have been good to unbolt this from that first because you can't get this assembly out with this bracket still on but i got it out u joints shot i got a pan out of there catching that caught the trans fluid at least most of it so we'll have to get that seal out before we put this back in but that ain't gonna happen until we get all of that and the rack done and everything but I uh, got this whole side of the suspension tore apart. Since it's got new ball joints and new outer tie rods, those fell right out, essentially. Just tapped them with a hammer, the whole thing fell apart. Got the brake caliper hung up with the, through the hole there, and then through that convenient rust hole there, we've got that being all held up, as you can see. Got the strut out. That's the bent, new bent, 30-year-old inbox, new old stock Monroe that we assembled with the original spring that's what we took out of there i'm going to keep that because i want that original spring but i've got a brand new kyb coilover strut pre-assembled so we'll put that in um control arm bushings feel feel perfect so we're not going to touch any of that but now that this is all you can leave the control arm bolted in when you drop the subframe here i should be able to i it's a cradle subframe whatever you want to call it but it's i think it's like four nuts yeah, there's a nut there. Um, something holding it on up here. Yeah, a nut right there. The same thing on the other side, and it should drop. Now we'll have to disconnect the steering column and everything from the rack and pinion before we take it down. But And the steering lines from the pump. But when this is down, it's going to make getting that pump out so much easier. But anyway, I had to have this apart. So I took the hub off and I had bought new bearings because, you know, I'm in this far. Let's get her done. Anyway, they're like a press-on bearing or they're supposed to be. As you can see, I uh, did it the wrong way. Don't ever do that. I mean, take your own risks. I was able to, what I did is I took the old one and I got the old bolts loose that kind of retain the bearing. It's like bearing retainer here. And I was able to use them to kind of break the hub or bearing free from the hub or from the spindle and it backed it out until the bolts ran out of thread because it was pushing up on this and then I was able to beat the old one out with my press thing here whatever you want to call it 
and got the old one out and I was like you know the inside of the spindle looks perfect maybe I can tap it in obviously you're not supposed to because you're just damaging the bearing in my case that bearing feels perfect but I just lightly tapped it all the way in make sure I had it lubricated so it would slot all the way in got it down got these started don't use these to pull it down because it'll bend your backing plate but I, I got it straightened out but just tapped it all the way down with a socket that fits in here helps a lot instead of just beating it in odd directions like me. But you just keep an eye on it, make sure it's going. This one went in all right, no problems there. And then I beat the seal in the wrong way, but it's in there, so that's cool. And boom, hub assembly replaced. Or bearing, because it's not a hub assembly, it's not, it's a press in. Now if this had 15s, it would be the hub, but it's got 14s, of course. <sighs> anyway, I'm rambling. We got, that's our big problem right there, this U-joint. Doing the bearings while we're in there. And we're working our way towards that rack and pinion. You can see it dripping over here on the driver's side. That's out of the rack and pinion. It's dripping trans fluid because that's what I got in it. I might actually put actual power steering fluid with a new pump and everything in it. I'll, I might as well, right? And then if you noticed, uh, I got three jacks holding it. These two big ones up front. I got one on the driver's side that's sturdy. This one kind of was not touching so i shimmed it so now it is in there you know kind of but you know it is what it is i got two tires on there it ain't going anywhere now the only thing i did notice is if you remember and we still haven't patched right about here there's a a blowout in the i don't know you want to call it frame rail it's not it's a unibody but the rail right there is a blowout on both sides that we need to come up with like a u patch like a big you know you and patch that in box it in i guess but i noticed the uh <laughs> with it up in the air like that driver door doesn't shut so nice gotta kind of pull on the door to get it to shut but it's kind of like that anyway but it makes it it's worse so it, it's got some flex in it in there which is not good but uh, the alignment shop will have it on the ground, so I'm not worried about them, you know, putting it up in the air, you know what I mean? I guess I got to to do the tires, but we'll uh, pretend we didn't see that. It, it's not going to fall apart, so, you know, it's just something to remember. I got I to gotta box that in, clean it up, cut it out, box it in. It should be a pretty easy patch, so, but that's a problem for another day. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to shut the hood for the night. We're, we're up under the garage here, as you can see. Isn't this nice? Uh, got a nice working space right now. And we got, you know, the other half of the garage here. So that'll do it for tonight. I will see you next time we're working, where I think we'll tear apart the other side.
right, so we got the driver's side all apart, at least as far apart as the passenger side. Haven't redone that hub yet, but uh, that bearing is separated. I can see the balls sticking out of it um, where it is pushing up on the outer hub. But uh, I think we're going to have to fire the parts cannon again. That uh, control arm bushing doesn't look very good here. That is blown. Yep. Looks like the inner, uh, what do you want to call that, race or whatever. It looks like the race got rusted and rust jacked. Probably was rusty and then I bought it and used it and probably just blew that bushing apart. That one feels okay. That is blown good. So, you know how that goes. <laughs> oh, you love to see it. Anyway, the other side. The other side's all full of dirt and stuff, so I sprayed it with some super clean and see if we can look at it. I'll probably I might as well just order them both if I'm doing one right, but that one it doesn't look as bad, mostly because it's sufficiently covered with power steering fluid. That sucks. Alright guys, so we're getting ready to pull the rack and pinion here, but we gotta disconnect the steering from the rack. To do that here, you gotta remove this boot here that protects the U-joint up there. And I pushed it up. That was hard, by the way. And I re-tightened that hose clamp to keep it up above this pin, which we got to drive that pin out, which will let this shaft free of that when we lower it. And then after that, the only thing we got to do is disconnect the lines to the power steering pump, which requires draining all the fluid, which is going to be a mess. But once that's done, we will take this nut... that nut up there that you can't see it's up there in the front and then that nut and then the one up in front there as well so there's four and we'll have a, a jack underneath here to hold it up and then we'll pop all those nuts out quick and then the whole thing should come down all right well we got the lines disconnected from the pump had this uh cute little plug to put on the line there just so we don't get dirt in there it's already drained out into that pan but that means take those four bolts out and this whole thing should oh we got to drive that pin out i forgot let me do that before i forget and cause issues drive that pin out and it's ready to drop all right so we're driving that pin out here so we got the steering set so we're on the driver's side here set so you can see that pin right there what we got going on here is a very long 3 ace extension with a quarter inch adapter to this little 730 seconds guy here. And that right now is allowing us to get up in here and on there. And really you just need something that fits in that hole or well is smaller than the size of the roll pin. And then I'm just smacking it with a hammer and it's starting to go right now, but I wanted to show you what, what we came up with here to get that out. Cause I'm sure you need some sort of long punch or a press or something in there. Now, getting it back in is going to be an ordeal because there's not that much room to work with, but we'll cross that road when we get to it. So that's how I'm getting it out. Well, that's an interesting view. Look at that. Um, however, we uh, this came apart. Something else slid out that I don't know was supposed to. Was that just supposed to slide out? Was it supposed to just be that easy and I didn't have to slide this roll pin out? Or... Or what, what, what's going on here? Is that supposed to? It looks like it is just in there. So I think that was easier than I needed it to be. And I guess I can just smack that on the new rack. I know which way it goes. So, um, yeah. I guess uh, maybe I didn't need to do that. But getting it to line up in there is going to be a pain in the butt, I'm sure. 
I don't, I don't, I don't know. Is that supposed to do that? I'll take this boot off and look at it, but you know. There, it's out. Let's go look at the rack. So here's the uh, nut and bolt that's supposed to be up here. Then here's the fancy nut that goes up into there on the frame. I'm gonna have to clean that up a little bit. But uh, the other side, we have figured out that somebody has been here before. I don't know. Yeah, here it is. So here's the that that conical nut or whatever you want to call it. But uh, then there was this up on right there. Somebody somebody been there before and did this to us. It spun out easy enough, so not bad. I'm putting it right back in. Now we can get a real close look at the blown bushing. Now I can't get these control arms like the full control arm, you know, that comes with the ball joint and everything. So I got to get the bushings and press the bushings in. So that sucks. Not to mention it's all weak out. So I gotta, yeah, it's gonna be a part for another week for sure. Uh, that one doesn't look near as bad. You can see the rubber's still kind of there. But hard, hard to tell, it kind of looks blown there too, but that one was more protected. But we got this out. We're definitely gonna get this rack off, pressure wash the heck out of this thing. Uh, might as well do the sway bar bushings while it's out, you know what I mean? Do the control arm bushings while it's out. Hey, look at this. Was this whole cradle? That's why um, this whole cradle was a reman because when this was in an accident, I knew this control arm was a reman. Or not a reman, but a salvage yard piece. But look at this. 7-8-1001-89 Voyager. The hood's off in 89 as well. That control arm's marked. This one's probably marked too, considering. But I don't know. Actually, I don't know for sure. So they replaced the whole cradle and everything. But that explains why they were in there. Look at that. 89 Voyager. That was from the accident in like the early 2000s, I believe. So I wonder if they did the rack and pinion and everything too. I don't know. But there she is. This is, it's leaking really bad. You can see it dripping right now actively. I mean, granted, look at the whole thing. The whole thing is saturated. This is all power steering fluid. Look at that. It's got a tag right here. I don't know what that tag says, but there it is. Does this have given it for alignment? That's going to be fun. Gotta make sure that gets lined back up. What do you want, Dilly? What? What? Hi. All right, well, we'll take a good look under here. I'm getting dripped on by the transmission, but how much room you got to work in here now? So, we got obviously that. And here is our power steering pump that needs to come out next. So, that is way easier to get at here. I got all this room. So, we'll pop the belt off and we will start working on that. Get that popped out because I got to press, pull that pulley off, press a new one on it, on the, the new pump, press that pulley on. But thinking about seeing if I can source this speed gear. There's nothing wrong with this one right now, but you know, it's old. So a guy might as well, you know, do that before that becomes a problem. Right now it's, I guess it's not that bad to get at anyway, so. The only thing I was thinking otherwise is this front brake line here. You know, a guy get up here at it right now. It would be the opportunity to do it. The other thing that would be a nice opportunity to do would be sealing this, resealing this cover here. You know, take a look at the differential while it's apart. That way we gauge how good it is. Make sure that pin ain't going to fall out. That would actually be a really good idea. Just pop this cover off now that the cradle's out. I think I'm going to do that for sure. I'll pop this cover off. I'll think about doing this brake line. Probably I'll do it since i gotta not going to have parts for a week. Yeah. Then we'll see if we what the price is on a new Speedo gear.
I mean, that one's got a couple chips in it, but it's, I mean, it's all there, but it's just old plastic. Probably an O-ring for this, though. Would not be a bad idea. I think else looks pretty good up under here, you know what I mean? Gotta get these seals out of the trans. Our steering pump, yeah, but, uh, look at that. Isn't that neat? update here um, obviously the subframes out the rack is disconnected um, mixed results going on here sway bar is out good result bad result uh, we snapped three of the four inner bushing bolts so two of them I had no chance one of them I had on the run and I snapped it it bound up and snapped but uh, two of them there there was there was no chance that was gonna stick around for us but uh, so we'll have to fight to get those out of there um, next problem is um, these bushings. We got these bolts out, nor nuts, no problem. These are were this one was seized to the the sleeve for that bushing. I have unseized it after destroying one non-impact 11/16 socket, as you can see here. It is free from the sleeve now, but what is going on now? is the little nut in here broke free and is spinning so i had to figure out how to get in there and hold on him or something but uh yeah that nut broke free i mean if it comes down to having to just cut it off but then he can't get a new nut in there i don't i gotta look at it on from the side here and see if i can get in there even i mean it's got to come out one way or another i don't got a choice but it is a free from the sleeve of the bushing that side's probably gonna have the same thing got the cheater bar and everything in here and didn't break didn't break an extent or a big uh, breaker bar that's cool so yeah yeah i'm about gonna call it for that i'm gonna look at this a little closer see if i can get in there to hold that because obviously it broke loose on the nut because it it freed up a little bit here but you know it it busted the a little tack well because it's got a little like slot on it so it's got the nut and then like a slot that you know pinches it so it doesn't spin it's not supposed to anyway but uh yeah what a what a pain in the butt this is turning out to be naturally let's get going on in here look at all the rust in there all these bushings look 
believe these are like a two piece bushing in here. Come on, get off of there, little washer. There we go. Get a washer. Yeah, and like a two piece bushing. I don't. I'm getting my hands dirty. I had gloves on, so just leave that there. Hopefully, this side, which has got all of the oil on it, kind of breaks free. Here, I'll, I'll see if I can turn this up for you so I can show you what I'm getting the impact off. Show you what I'm talking about here. There, that's one way to get it up in the air. So, if you look, see, it's got this little slotted guy. That's supposed to hold the nut, but I guess if you bend him out of the way with a hammer, you get in there with a wrench, I think. So, I'll have to have it upside down here. But I think that will work. As you can see, that one I got, that's the one I had on the run. This one snapped off pretty flush. That one snapped off pretty flush, and that one came out. So they've got like th slotted threads in here. I'll probably have to drill them out and re thread. Be my assumption, but we'll see. Yeah, see, if I bang that guy out of the way here. Bet you I can get in there and get at that. See? Yeah, he's he unwelded himself. So let's see. Guy can get in here quick. Let you take a look in here. Yeah. Spray that down real good. We can get a wrench in there and we'll have that off. The good thing is we got it free from that um, sleeve so we don't have to break the bolt off. But we'll see how good that bolt, what good a shape that bolt's in. It's probably have to be replaced anyway. I should replace it. But there, yeah, we can get in there. So that's no problem. So, uh, yeah. But I, th I think this will look really good once it's cleaned up and painted like a gloss engine paint black or something. I think that'll look good. Now we can tell when uh, new stuff starts to leak and stuff, you know, because it will, obviously. But, oh boy. This one on the run. In fact, I unthreaded it and then re-threaded it and then it snapped the freaking threads out. Dang it. All right, well, I got everything my work area cleaned up. I got this out here. I got it soaking in super clean just to let it soak and eat up that oil overnight. It'll get sprayed and pressure washed at some point, probably before I go back to work on this, but maybe not. I don't know. I should get these out before. Obviously, we got a predicament there where we just got to cut that out because that nut has snapped off inside of there, and then it uh, I rounded it off. I had the right size uh, wrench on there, and it slipped and caught it weird, and then it rounded it off immediately. So that's cool. We got to try break this one free. Hopefully, it, it's free from that sleeve. If we get it free from the sleeve, we'll just cut it out. I mean, we'll, we'll probably have to cut it out anyway, but, you know, and then I got to fish the nut out of there. I got one of the sway bar mounting bolts that that one that I had on the run I got that to spin up I had the other one on the run and then it snapped that like clip in nut off 
I gotta see if I can source those clip in nuts because if that's the case, I'll just punch the last one out and then punch the other two out and just put four new um, threads in there. So that's a, a progress, I would say. Um, what else? I mean, yeah, that's what I was working on was that I snapped the grease zerk off one of the ball joints because naturally I got it sitting. Not that one, that one's good. But that one that's got like a 45 grease zerk over there, I snapped that off. Anyway, while we order all those parts, we do got plenty to work on, so we'll stay busy. We still got to pull the power steering pump out, get that pulley pulled off of there, get the pulley pressed onto that new pump that we bought that we pressed the pulley on backwards, which we have now gotten that old pulley that was on backwards off. Broke that pulley, but that's fine. We want an OEM-style pulley anyway because they're a different size we have learned. So we'll get that pulley off onto the new pump, get that new pump up and installed here. Then we've got to rebuild that hub right there still. We've got to put our new U-joint in that half shaft. Uh, we got to get the lines and everything off the old rack, get it set up right on the new rack. And then we were going to pull off the diff cover, take a look in there. We might as well inspect it. It's, what, 10 or 14, 10 mil bolts, no problem. Get that resealed up. Um, while we got everything down, I don't remember, did we service the trans on this or do we just... Uh, you know, cross her fingers and let her let her eat. I don't remember. We might as well drop the pan, take a look how it's going. Since we got all the fluid out anyway, do a complete fluid change. Um, whether we change it or not, that'll be its second change. And, you know, clean up the rest of the fluid because half the fluid stayed in the torque converter. So might as well drop the pan, get a new filter and everything for that. But, uh, yeah. And then we got to pressure wash that guy still. Obviously, we got to get the control arms out of it still. We'll get them out. Uh, I'll have to cut that one, but that is what it is. No no big deal. Probably have to cut the other one too. We'll see. Naturally. Yeah, and then sort, sort of some parts. Uh, that, that, yeah, that came apart way farther than I figured it would. But hey, you know what that means? That means literally everything on this suspension is new, which is great. That means it should ride down the road. Fantastic. And then we got to start figuring out... Uh, making a patch for both sides of the uh, frame on this thing here. I want to have that done before I t take it into a shop and have it put on a lift. Uh, you know what I mean? Might as well have it fixed. Very good. Very good. But I think we'll clean that up. We'll paint that subframe, you know, with black uh, engine paint. We'll paint the sway bar as well. Might as well do some touch-up on the firewall and everything while we're back here. You know what I mean? Clean that all up. We'll see. We'll see what we're doing. And we, oh yeah, we gotta get the seals in the transmission. You can't see, but I gotta plug with rags. But we gotta get uh, the new axle seals put in the trans. Might as well reseal this guy right here. I think I got a gasket on hand for that. So perfect. So that's gonna do it for tonight. Uh, I don't know how much I'll cover. You saw me beat the one hub out, so I got to do the same thing. I might just do that off camera. Probably do the U joint off camera. We'll see. It's a U joint, as you can see. U joint. Look at that. Cool. Got to beat him out and put a new one in. All right, power steering pump we installed last year is back out. So now we'll install one that doesn't leak. But I got to get this. Uh, Pull you off first.
Well, naturally that new pump, the inlet for the fill is kinked at the wrong angle. I got it bent a little bit, but I can't, I don't want to break the case. So here's an example piece right here of what this little tube should look like. As you can see, we have a uh, customed it up here. We've shortened it a little bit and then the tube will go on here. I kind of dinged it out just a little bit and we're going to put a, you know, stronger clamp on here, but it's not high pressure, so it should be all right. But uh, yeah, we had to shorten this up to get it to fit. Otherwise it would kink this hose. The angle was weird. It still is, but it's better now or will be. Okay. I've got the reservoir and that line all in in that hose. That's how I've got to have that hose clamp there. Um, it took me some time. I had to cut down the excess on that hose clamp. As you can see, the tensioner's right there, and then you got to make sure you don't hit the alternator and get that bolt started down there. There were many curse words had getting that in there. But what we can see down here now is that our hose is going to line up now. i got to go get the hose clamp and get that clamp down. But, uh, yeah, that's a pain in the butt. But it's going to work. So we're, uh, we're good. So I guess that's the only thing I got done today on Blue Van here is getting the new power steering pump uh, set up and installed. So that's cool. That's a win. All right, belt's back on. I did start the van briefly just to verify that that was all good and the serpentine belt's good to go, and it is. So didn't obviously don't want to burn up that new pump we got in there. But, hey, it's good to go. All right, so we're up in the differential, and this actually looks really, really good. There's no play in the diff pin or anything. There's no retainers installed. We will be installing those. I did purchase those. But everything looks, you know, phenomenal. Bearings look all good. You know, there's no wear in the spider gears, really. You know, you know I almost wonder if this has been, you know, a remand or something at some point. Don't know. All right, we got the transfer gear cover off. I'd take this plastic piece down and then I moved my, my brake caliper over. But uh, it looks good in here too. Cover looks pretty good. I'm going to repaint this side. But it looks pretty good. No, not rusty or anything. There's a little bit of a sticker left over there. But in here, yeah. It looks pretty good. Got to clean up the rest of the RTV off of here. I got a cork gasket we're going to put in with a little bit of RTV. But, you know, it looks mostly good the only thing i just noticed just now right here there's a chip in that gear see it two chips right there well, it, obviously it's not going to cause a problem but it's there and then i see this little scrape right here like somebody tried to wedge this cover open at some point and then if you look at this bolt right here it looks like it's had a socket on it so i'm I'm thinking this trans has been apart before. Which is good. It means it's been worked on. Now it looks good in here too. So I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to put this cover back on after I paint it. So I'm going to clean the cover up, get it painted quick, let it dry. And then we will throw it back on. So I'll let this drip. And then I'm keeping, this is all the trans fluid that's come out of it. So I'll measure this so I know what to put back in it. Obviously we're still going to drop this pan, put that gasket on as soon as we're done with this. Well, actually, once I get this paint drying, I'll drop that pan out. That'll work. All right, guys. Well, I got the trans pan off here. I got all the bolts lined up how they are because there's a couple that are longer than the others, meaning somebody before me stripped the bolts out. I don't think I've had this pan off. I don't. I didn't remember doing it anyway, and it sure doesn't look like it. Um, in fact, I know I didn't. I wouldn't have used clear silicone to adhere the gasket on. I wouldn't have done that. Um, there's a dent in the pan right here we got to pound out, but looking at the magnet here that looks like a normal amount of metal for Between services, so it's a good thing. We're servicing it now that we know this trans is good and works So we'll we'll get this all cleaned off and put that back on Anyway, we'll pull the filter down here get the gasket surface all cleaned up I uh, will clean this pan up bang that dent out of it And I think we'll re repaint the bottom quick like we did with the other one and then I'll uh, slap new filter and put it back up. All right, so it's the next day here. I've got actually quite a bit done. We, uh, I just finished 
putting this bearing in this hub for the other side. We did that one uh, last Tuesday or Monday or whatever. It's Saturday now. So I got this one in, got the seal out, everything in there. And yesterday what we got done, so if, I don't remember where we left off, but I kind of just went to work last night. Got this cover painted, resealed, gaskets on there. We've got two new axle seals, one on the driver's side, which is a pain in the butt, and one on the passenger. We actually pulled this whole piece off and we resealed this whole outer piece. And what this is, is this has the race for the differential bearing on the driver's side. We checked that bearing, that bearing looks good in there. But we resealed this all up, had this off. Diff covers just on there with three bolts. We're waiting on the retainers for the diff pin as well as the gasket that we'll put on with some RTV. And then we gotta paint that cover, we'll paint it once we have it back off and then reseal that up. And then we had the trans pan off, painted that, banged a dent out of it, put a new filter in, resealed that bad boy. Um, I have some choice words for the last sole that stripped all the bolts out of the pan. There are, I think, two bolts in here that literally have no threads. So I put some silicone in there just to hold them up and seal it. We're going to see if that leaks. If it leaks, we'll take it down to helicoil. Otherwise, it'll get helicoiled at its next service at 300,000 miles is when we'll service this transmission next. Uh, I think it was five and a half quarts of fluid I got in the pan out of the whole thing. So we'll put five in. Test drive it, check the levels, add from there. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, we got the seals, axle seals in. It's, it basically, we resealed the whole transmission. Did the complete service on it, besides the diff cover we're still waiting on. So, I guess all that leaves right now to take apart is this U-joint, which is what we went in there for on top of the power steering. So I got it soaked in some super clean right now. Clean this up here, and we'll get ready to beat this U-joint out. Okay, so here's what our carrier bearing for the half shaft looks like. So you've got this bearing in here, and then this guy is supposed to be hermetically sealed to this. As you can see, it's not. There was just a little bit holding on. This was all let go, so that's pretty much what was wrong with it. But and then this guy kind of just taps on over top of it like that. This is like a dust shield. So that's what we... Uh, um, had on the vehicle. It's an SKF made in Italy. And this is what came. I don't believe that is the same part. So that's the one I think I got at O'Reilly. And then the one I got on Rock Auto is the same thing as that, which is clearly also not right. So I got some research to do to figure out what actually that is. So great. So I might have just ruined that, guys. Um, I can't, you would think that it would be uh, sealed, like, you know, like molded onto here all the way around, but I can't tell where it was. You know, like it was only molded right here, which I guess gave it play to move. I mean, I guess that makes sense maybe, but uh, this part I think is unobtainium right here. So I did some reading and I, I was kind of skeptical. I figured, hey, wouldn't the, you know, the, the long CV axle fit in the same spot? Uh, it does. So we're going to install the longer CV axle that comes in the newer vans and some of these. So I got to order up that CV axle because if I can't get that part, there's no point in doing that U-joint. So I'm going to order that axle up and call it a day. It's unfortunate. So now I've got a spare U-joint and carrier bearing. I think I'm going to actually return on that stuff. <laughs>
notice we got the zip tie mount for our rad, ca or our rad hose. This was on that 92 Caravan ES that had the 3 so it has the same cooling system set up still. That is going to bolt right in. And now we've got a clamp for it, proper one. I want to put that in really quick. There, that's a little more proper. I do believe the gutter is clogged. Well guys, I finally did this. This is over uh, eight months, nine months in the making. Uh, one of my subscribers here, one of you guys, recommended a Dorman grommet here that fits the first and second gen rear wipers here. It is Dorman 42059. And uh, I was able to dig the old one out within pieces with this, get it out far enough and then cut it. I've got a razor blade right there. This one right here, I was able to press in without pulling the back hatch. I was able to do it with the motor in. A little bit of, uh, I put some, what, brake grease on there, the, the one that's good for the silicone and whatnot, and the rubber. Um, that way, it just made it going on easier. Because it would stretch a little bit, but it's on there perfect. I pulled the motor out here, so and then pushed this back as far as it'd go. So that is nice and sealed. Look at that. I know there's a Mopar grommet for Jeeps. I believe a certain like Grand Cherokee from like 17 to 20 something, like 2020 20 something. But it's got a nipple on the end. You have to cut off this plug and play. You don't have to cut anything. So that's cool as heck. All right, guys. Well, it's been a couple weeks here, but uh, we just went to cut and we used the sawzall here, and we were able to cut the uh, control arm bolt here. We were able to get the control arm out. Now what we got to do? get this out of here and what we're thinking about doing here dad's idea is try to get it to hold back in here try cut this out just a little more because we don't have the room to get it out of there if you see because of this this stupid guy right here hopefully the other side comes off we don't have to do that but we'll see well we were starting to grind it here and the damn thing just snapped off so that made our lives easier here i think i think this will come out i might have to get a magnet in here and kind of direct it but i think it'll come out now yeah, it's around here somewhere. Whatever, we're gonna fight with this thing. Either that or it's gonna fall in the control arm forever. All right, so we ended up having to cut a notch to get that out, which is gonna serve us a good purpose. I used a magnet. We fished a nut in here, and I've got a bolt holding it here, and we're gonna tack that in place there, and that'll be our new threads. And then we'll, we've got the plate here, and then we'll just weld that back up. Good as new. Okay, I'm looking away. Hold on. Holding. Can I look? Um, yeah, we both better look. You're gonna stay there? It's loose, but it's on there right, right now. Let me hit it again. Just keep it. But I can, I'm just, I'm away. I'm looking away. How are we looking? Uh, if this spins, we're doing alright. I hit the threads. Oh, well, that's fun. Alright, so we got the other nut fished in here for the other side. Just gonna try to thread it on. Holding it with a magnet. Got it. Got it? Alright. So this is where we're at. Uh, it, it helps if you use the right wire, I guess. But we, we filled it in here. I just ground it all back down. But I think we keep blowing through here. We didn't weld over here. See that hole? I think it's thin from rust. And you can see the rust when I was digging in here with a magnet, so build that back up, grind it back down, get it close. But we got two nuts on here, we've got threads on both sides, so we're going to build it back up and then got this. It also helps if it's cleaned off, I guess. <laughs> uh, but we'll put this patch back in, because you can slide a nut in here when there's no threads on it, so no big deal, get it all done tonight. Alright, so we got the control arm here, and this bushing, the way it pounds out here, is it pounds out this way. And they've got a tack here, right? If you look, where? There's a tack weld on, yeah, on the bottom right here. So we gotta grind that tack weld out, and then pound the bushing out this way, and then he's replaced with this guy right here. So there's our new bushing on this side. Now for this side, this thing was a rusty pile of junk, and I'm like, there's no way we're gonna get new bushings over that thing. Turns out this nice kit that I bought here, which is this Mevotech, 
Supreme, whatever, where's the part number? Here. Overbuilt for durability, great. Glad I bought the good ones, they're red, so they're, you know, racing fast. So, this right here is your inner steel bushing that your rubber bushing slides over top, right? This comes with all these new things and everything. Yeah, anyway, so it comes with this. So what we did is, it was so rotten, and this was all that's left of it. And, and that right there, but we just took the uh, channel locks here, held the control arm, and just twisted until most of it came off, and then there was a little bit left on the end here. And there is this guy right here on the end. He comes off, so you smacked him off, smacked the rest of this bushing out. So I'm gonna clean this up with a grinder tomorrow. It's, I'm about done for the day. Get the new wash on, get the new bushing on. So then this is all rebuilt, ready to go on this side. And then we've got to, like I said, grind that weld out. It's just a tack. I'm not putting a tack back in, I'll tell you that much. Pound this out, that's gonna suck. Hopefully that comes out no problem. And then this control arm is rebuilt. Well, actually is legitimately rebuilt because it's got a new ball joint in it already. So that's a fully rebuilt control arm. All right, got some updates here, guys. We've got this all cleaned up. I put some anti-seize on there for the uh, new bushing that goes over it so it doesn't seize back up. But notice here, we have the old bushing out and we have the new one in. So there was some work here. So what we did, first thing I did is we got a ball joint press here, press this inner out, get it out of the way. And then we used, I believe, this lip here, just to kind of press this in because it doesn't sit flush, it sits kind of stuck out to get it flush here. And once we got it moving, we sprayed it, heated it up, and then we ended up beating it out with this socket right here, which is three quarter. Once we got the old one on moving out, it popped right out. Then we tapped the new one in as far as it would go. And once it stopped going here, because we were tapping on here and this is obviously the rubber that moves, we took this 34 mil socket, which fits perfectly over the bushing, and tapped it the rest of the way on. So that worked out great. That's in there. Here's the new hardware. Here, that's a $7 bolt and a dollar for the nut. This nut's for this guy right here. I got all new hardware right here, as you can see. It's like 30 bucks in hardware. And then we've got this bushing out of the control, or out of the guy right here, the cam frame. So this was a pain because it's a one piece. The new bushings are two piece right here, but it's the same thing. That was a pain. I had to get like a screwdriver up around it and push it through. But we're over here working on the other one and I got it on the run here. I got it moving with my big breaker bar and heat PV blaster, but got the wrench on here and to keep it from wanting to go this way and strip like the other one did, I have a, like a little punch here. I got it wedged in here so it doesn't want to let it go. So then it holds, and while it holds, that lets us spin the socket on there, which that's a metric size, but I pounded 11 sixteenths on it. But I'm gonna heat it up again and just keep working with this, and hopefully we get that one to spin out so we don't have to do any cutting here like we had to do over there. Well, we won. Impact kind of helped once we broke it loose here, but we got it out. As you can see, that bolt is junk. So it's not <laughs> got to get this bushing off here. Like I said, I think I'll twist this one off too with a uh, channel locks. Clean this all up, get the next one on. Then we got to press that bushing out and then uh, get that rubber bushing out. And then I'm going to clean this up, paint it, and then we'll start assembling. Here's a better example that sleeve. This one's not so rusted off. It was seized on here. I've been heating it, spraying it. Finally got it to spin here. Got it. That was a pain. Got it out though. All right, we're all done with the other control arm. This one fought me more. So this is what I had going. I had a big socket here to uh, kind of fall over the bushing here. And uh, if I can get this one back off, that 34 mil to go over this. I had to take this bushing and there's a lip on the inside because it's like a press fit. I had to grind that lip down because it would not go by it. It was actually starting to kind of cup this inner surface here. 
So I kind of grinded it down so it was more of a smooth bevel. And I was able to get it in no problem, so that bushing's in. Got this guy all set up here, ready to roll. And then that's it. Got the other control arm over here. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Got that new grease circ on here because I broke the other one off when I was laying it up and down on the ground. Otherwise, just got to clean all this stuff up. I'm going to paint it with some black engine paint once it's all cleaned up. And then we start the reassembly. I'm going to go in and grease these ball joints real quick. But other than that, it's all reassembly now. Alright guys, so I cleaned up the cross member and the control arms and I got them painted this morning. I gotta wait for this to dry and I'm gonna flip them over, paint the other sides. But we're working on the sway bar here. And I took the grinder here and I grinded off all the rust. This thing is pitted as can be. Uh, new outer bushings fit kind of okay. But as you can see where the inner bushings go, the sway bar is pretty, pretty thin. And the bushings actually are able to walk back and forth. So, I, uh, sorry, I'm getting this off here. It's also a little thin here. It's loose, but it's not that bad. I think when that crushed down, it'd be okay, but there's play here, so we gotta figure out how to deal with that, because I don't think I'm gonna find one of these sway bars. So, I mean, I'll look quick. I'll see if some, anybody's got one, but I highly doubt it, and if they do, I highly doubt it's in any good shape. So, I'm kind of thinking of a couple ideas either. I don't know, find some sort of rubber and wrap this in. Maybe some thin metal and twirl it around there. Or otherwise, I think what I might try to do is literally just build it back up with JB Weld or something. I don't want to try weld to this and do... I, I could do that too, I guess, but... it's a lot of filling to do here. That JB Weld was... And it's not like it's gonna... I mean, it would hold to this and then it's stuck in here, so there's no way it's gonna break or anything, really. You know what I mean? It's just kind of a stuck in there, I guess, right? So we, I might try that. We'll see. But we're getting it cleaned up that way. We can prep it for paint and everything too. Otherwise, while well, this dries, I gotta go in and put this guy on right here. This is to hold the uh, what are we gonna call it the differential pin in, and then we will put this gasket on. But we gotta take that cover off, clean that cover up, paint it just the same. And then we'll get this all set up and we'll let's try and we'll put this in. I'm not very proud of it, but at the same time, pretty proud of it. So we built up JB Weld where all the bushings go. This is the worst one out of the bunch and it's definitely significantly better than it was. You know, it, not, anything here is better than nothing. Uh, the nearest sway bar to me on car part, which is with, for salvage yards, is in Milwaukee and that is... Um, like seven hours so no thanks no thanks anyway that cures in six minutes or sets in six minutes cures in six hours so we'll probably paint it in four hours whenever I get to it but it's pretty smooth so I don't think that'll tear up the bushing at all but that'll that's gonna do it that's our repair right there not bad all right progress update here you saw the JB Weld, it's, it's hardened up, so it's set. That is going to help a lot. This is the worst one right here, and it's pretty well smooth with it. It's not perfect, but guess what? It's a lot better. This one's pretty good. I kind of coated them all, so it'll be a nice fit. And as you can see, the way the JB Weld hardens, it's smooth, so that shouldn't eat up the bushing. But got the cross member flipped over here. Got this side coated. Paint. I'm going to do one more coat on this just because of where the cross member is. Got the um, control arms flipped over. Got them all coated again. And then I got the diff cover out here. Got that coated after I grinded off the little bit of rust on it. So, letting that dry. I'm going to put the diff pin retainers in right now. And then I got to get to working on the power steering rack here. So, I got to get the, the new old lines off of the old rack, put them on the new rack. Get my tie rod ends off, count the turns, everything, put them on the new rack. 
because both racks should be centered right now. I'm going to do a quick measurement, make sure they are both set as if it was steering wheel straight. And then we'll counter turns, get these all turned in there. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. It, I'll just measure the length of this right. Well, the, the length's going to be the same no matter what. What I need to do is measure from here to here and then here to here. Make sure we're straight on both sides. About the same and then we'll double check make sure we're good here on here you know what i mean get it close and i believe we got to get this bracket off cleaned up put on this new bushing right here and that'll be that all ready to go and then i think next on the list after all that is the motor mounts i got all new motor mounts in here Transfluid and stuff too, but running out of boxes here. Got all new motor mounts, fuel filter, so we can do the fuel filter at some point here too. Depends what we're waiting on here because we're really waiting on all that stuff to dry and set. And then it's assemble. It's starting to assemble. We'll get everything assembled on that cross member. And back under the vehicle it goes. I don't know what else there is to do under here while that's out, besides the motor mounts and stuff. You know, yeah, we're getting we're getting pretty close here. I can see the end in sight. All right, so we're getting ready to put the diff pin retainers in, and I needed to find the torque spec for the ring gear bolts. And the ring gear bolts here is 70 foot-pounds, as shown on page 21163 of the official Chrysler service manual. So we'll get those out, get the retainers in, and torque those down to 70 foot-pounds. All right, I got the first diff pin retainer on. Got these red Loctited and then back to 70 foot pounds. So it's kind of a pain to get in and out of here. So you need a long 3 8 ratchet to undo them, and you need to use half inch socket plus this baby extension. And you can only do them one at a time because they gotta be out here, otherwise your wrench will hit the hit the edge of the diff cover. Because you need to clear this space, but also not hit here. So you undo the bolts here, or in this case right here work. And that'll work. This is on the torque wrench right now, and I got it to 70 foot pounds. Got them both on there, so I gotta now put the transmission back in neutral, rotate it all the way around, get the other two out, and do the same thing. All right, update time here. I've been quite busy. So we've got the whole cross member here with the control arms. They're not torqued down yet. I just got them on here. I'm not gonna torque them till I have the sway bar in. Kind of help me with the whole ride height thing which looking at the 93 it's pretty flat like it's sitting right now so we should be we should be pretty close but everything's tightened up snug anyway i forgot to paint those so we're painting them right now they're drying otherwise what i got over here in this mess i got this guy smacked on here and i got the roll pin smacked in we realized we didn't have to deal with that that was unfortunate that this just literally slides out <laughs> of the steering shaft. Be fun lining it up, getting it to go back in, but we'll we'll get it. Otherwise, I'm about to start cracking these lines off, and then I'll get the tie rod ends out. That'll be that'll be, be a trick to that getting this to hold in place or something. I don't know what I I could ratchet strap it down to the sawhorse here, and that that should hold it maybe. Otherwise, yeah, um, I did spray some white lithium grease on the U-joint uh, in there. It looked good. It had full of grease, wasn't dry, but I sprayed some on it before I sealed it up. You know, why not? Otherwise, our JB Weld Fix is perfect. These are tight as can be, so that was the solution. This one didn't dry very well, as you can see, as it pushed some JB Weld up, but this was the best one anyway, so, and it's still snug. It just pushed out what it didn't need, so that'll that'll work. That'll work. Otherwise, looking good, nice and clean. Painted, ready to roll. And I don't know, I did get the differential cover on. That's all ready to roll. Got the new differential pin retainers in there. Got that all tightened down, torqued. Red Loctite, the whole nine yards. We're getting close, guys. We are getting very, very, very close. Once we get these brackets on here, I'll flip this back over and it'll be ready to put the power steering rack on and That'll be that.
In fact, I think these brackets, this is what, probably what I'll do now, so yeah, these are dry. I'll get these bolted down tight and find the torque spec for the control arm bolts and stuff and torque that all down, good to go. done here got all the lines on the power steering rack got everything tightened down torqued down ready to go got the jack out here with the blocks we're going to set it on that and then we're going to roll it up under the vehicle get it lined up and then we will uh bolt it back into the body all right we got a big update here the cross member is bolted back in torqued down to 90 foot pounds on all four bolts and as much of a pain as it was we have the steering shaft back in place there so now all I got to do is go in uh, tighten down the clamp on that rubber boot up there and then we've got to tighten down the power steering lines fill that up let it start air bleeding get the axles and the trans here and then we'll fill that up there I think five and a half quarts I said and then we're gonna get the new shocks bolted up here uh, get the spindles bolted on get the wheels on and that'll be that so looking good it went up there pretty easy besides the steering that was a pain to line up but we got it everything here is nice and tight everything's good to go all right got the power steering lines all tightened up i dug through the van and found all the power steering fluid i've had so letting that gravity feed right now or gravity bleed i should say no leaks yet and then uh Here's the pile of parts I dug out of the van. We got the axle, the other axle, the spare driver axle because we were gonna redo the uh, intermediate shaft but then didn't, so that's a spare for another van, another project. Brand new KYB struts, whole bunch of trans fluid, and there's a fuel filter and three motor mounts that we will do another day. So we're, uh, I'm gonna pop the axles in quick, fill up the trans, and then I'll get the spindles put in. Actually, I'll probably put those in before I fill the trans just in case. Okay, we got the axles in, got the knuckles loosely on there on both sides, and then I got the strut started on this side, and I realized that I torqued that control arm not even close. So we'll do it right. I'm going to loosen up the pivot bolt, and I'll loosen up this control arm strut bolt, and I will let the thing fall. Then I can get the strut bolted up. I'll get it snugged. And then we will, once we get it on the ground, I will torque it back to spec, which is 105 foot pounds and 70 foot pounds. And I believe, I don't remember what size, I 19 mil or something. But otherwise, the axles are in. Yeah, it's definitely out. The angle's funny. So I will, I will fix it. It's extremely bad. It's not even close. So yeah, otherwise, uh, we're getting there. We're making good progress here. I'm running out of new parts here. So I'll probably unbox the other strut, get it bolted in two, and then I'll, I'll do them both at the same time. Well, there's some progress. Yeah, that kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie. So I got pivot bolt and everything less than hand tight. It's hand loose right now. Got the strut, uh, strut arm bolt or nut loose on both sides. Fighting these new bushings for both, plus fighting the control or the sway bar bushings, plus fighting this new strut that's all the way out 
Oh my God, that was a pain. So I, I got it lowered enough to get the strut wedged on top of the axle here. And I went up here and I tightened all these down so it was sitting all the way up. And I just kept pressed on it low enough. Because that got us close because we we're on top of here. Got it lined up. And I, I was holding the screwdriver in here. Got it low enough to where it just slid the screwdriver in. Used that to wedge it a little bit, this little driver. Enough that I could get the big driver on the bottom bolt. And then once I got that in there, I was able to start the bottom one. And then get that push through, start the top. And now it's on there and we're in. I got to repeat the same thing on the other side. I'll set the tripod up so you can kind of watch the struggle. But it's this suspension is tight because it, you know it's all new hardware and everything. So just don't let me forget to tighten the control arm bolts once we get it on the ground because I'll I'll torque it to spec the right way now that we're here and you gotta tighten down the ball joint nut and the tie rod and pretty much everything. Get it all tight. We gotta go back and check. But uh yeah we're gonna win. Yeah see how high this is and now with that other one in the strut is pushing the sway bar down so i think this side's going to be easier which is nice because they're all connected because of the sway bar naturally oh all right okay i just got the speed um speedo shaft gear put back in the transmission got to make sure you have the axle in for that on the passenger side and you just rotate the axle until it drops in um, don't get sand down there like I did because there's um, dirt and stuff on top of the transmission. Um, we're going to pretend we didn't do that and that it's okay and I, you know, it's fine. Anyway, we're going to add trans fluid because that means after that the trans is completely sealed up. Axles, pans, dip cover, you know, transfer gear cover. So I believe it's five and a half quarts. So I'm going to add five and then we'll test it from there. So I'm going to add five full quarts. And make sure we got no leaks and then i will go back and i'm going to tighten down all the suspension like i said and i think i'll bring it back when we're going to put the brakes back on okay i got the front suspension all tightened down besides the control arm i've got this tightened to 35 foot pounds plus whatever i needed to get the castle nut or the cotter key on for the castle nut bolt i've got the ball joint nut and bolt to 70 foot pounds and I've got the strut nuts to 75 foot-pounds. And that was after, I mean, this isn't right either because we're not at ride height, but I did level it with a level here crudely. I lined it up with two studs here and got them all tight. And then you use this bottom nut to adjust the pivot on your strut for your toe in and out. I think that's, is that toe or camber? I think it's toe, it doesn't matter you know, the strut adjustment. So the the bearing is straight up and down on both sides right now. So I've done that on both sides. So now that means we gotta put the brakes on. And once we get the brakes on, I gotta go find somebody, or I think what I'm gonna have to do is wedge something on the brake pedal, because I don't have the ability to tighten the axle nuts until I can hold the wheels. So we will do that next, get the brakes on there. And uh, we're getting really close. Really close, actually. All right, I got the axle nuts tightened up to 180 foot pounds, and I'll show you how I did it. I had to use a skill saw here, cut a piece of wood to length, and boom, brakes. I gotta get it out. Didn't damage the wheel, perfect. Oh, there's some spray here. Get this out of here, too. Uh, next, wheels. Put the wheels on it, get it on the ground. Torque down the, I'll probably jump on the bumper and kind of shimmy the suspension. Then I'll torque down all of the control arm bolts. And then we're going to fire it up, bleed the power steering, test the transmission. And uh, might as well take it for a ride here. But i got to clean up before I get in it and sit in it. i got to get those bricks out of here. They were in the garage. Um... Oh, I got to do the two uh, bolts for the uh, brake hose brackets. Forgot, I knew I was forgetting something, and that's what it was. So, we are just about there. Well, it's been a while since we've seen it with the tires and wheels on it. That's cool. Um, something's wrong on this side. 
something is tight in this wheel it's hard to spin um i don't think it's the brakes in fact i know it's not the brakes brakes are loose i thought it felt kind a little weird when i was tightening that axle nut down i i wonder i don't know if the seal is jammed in there or something something might be up with this wheel bearing on this side i don't quite know actually i got i got a hunch it's something to do with that seal but uh for now i'm not gonna drive it like this but we're gonna get it on the ground and we're gonna tighten up that suspension the uh, control arm bolts and then we'll come back to this something's wrong here i can feel it because the wheel won't spin without um it's hard to spin put it that way i can move it but it's hard otherwise the other side's nice nice and loose ready to go tires are tight there's no play in the steering or anything so, yeah, see this one's nice and free Anyway, I'm going to get it on the ground. I'm going to get under there. Torque the pivot bolts to 105. And then torque the strut nuts to 70. And then we will fire it up. Make sure we don't have any leaks like transmission leaks or power steering or anything. Make sure that all works. i got to bolt this down still, I guess, quick. I'll do that probably really quick. That should be It's just two bolts. And then these are the old strut nuts we don't need. And, uh, yeah, and then we will come and address this. That's something wrong, something very wrong, unfortunately. Okay, with it on the ground and with one 2x4 under each tire, I was able to get in there enough to get the wrench in the cross member and everything and tighten those pivot bolts to 105 and then the strut arm bolts to uh, 70. So the suspension's torqued. Now the only thing we got to worry about is this wheel bearing. But I want to start it up quick. Make sure we're not leaking anything too bad. Oh, let's shut the radio off for you quick. I'm not going to lie, I am exhausted. I've been working at this all day. It's 10 o'clock now at night. I've been working since like, what, 10 in the morning? Let's turn the dome lights on here. Got the wheel vaguely close to straight, too. That's nice. It's pure luck. Okay. Lead the power steering. It's kind of working. Any leaks? Nope. It drank all the fluid. Needs more. Exploring for this one. There we go. Blew it in the reservoir. All right, let's try bleed it again. Verify no fluid leaks or anything. Hate touching the steering wheel with my dirty hands, especially after I just cleaned it, but. Slowly go over and bleed the air out. All the way back the other way. Now we'll go back to center. Should be right there. Check fluid level. Bunch of air bubbles coming out. You see them all? Yeah, it's foaming up. Bunch of air bubbles. So, if I just got fluid in here, we just got to let it circulate. Um... Get this ramp here. It will bump the trans into gear. 
I'm backing off those blocks. They're kind of on my foot here. Okay. Okay. Oh, we got a transmission. Good. Let us sit here and run and charge that battery up. Get these blocks out. Well, we got a vehicle that moves again anyway. So, about to get this up in the air, double check that. Make sure it wasn't the brake that was just stuck. That'd be that'd be the best case scenario, but I got a feeling it's something weird. I so one of the bearings had like an inner seal on the back that I thought went over top of it. And I got a feeling it doesn't, and I got a feeling it's wedged in there. That's my hunch. But uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see when I get it up in the air. Who knows? I could have messed up that bearing too, installing it because uh, I beat it with a hammer on. You know the way you're not supposed to do it. But uh, well, you know. But it also spun fine until I put the uh, axle nut on and tightened it. So. And the way it, it felt weird on this side going in, so I think something, I should have stopped, but, well, what do you do? Is what it is. At least I know this time it'll come back out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it up in the air here, and then I'll uh, do the power steering. Makes it easier on the pump, and the rack and everything. Yeah. Now we'll try to bleed the power steering a little more. Lots of air bubbles, see them in there? So we'll top it off a little bit more. I'll use you guys to see because I can't see when I'm pouring air. Go with that. That's a little high actually, but whatever. Oh, we got power steering though. It's getting easier. Oh, that power steering is nice. I'll tell you, the new rack is going to be nice, that's for sure. Oh, there. How are we looking? I drank a little bit. Yeah, we'll just let that pump spin. How are we looking? Any grips or anything? A little bit of spill power steering. That's coming from up there where I spilled it, pouring it, but, uh... No leaks back here, trans isn't leaking. Seems fine to me. A little bit of moisture coming out the exhaust, you can see, because it's been sitting here. Month, well, yeah, good month at least. It's been sitting here, I think. I don't know, you guys don't know the timestamps. You'll see, you'll tell me how long it's been here. But it's been here a while and we've got a lot of rain since it's been parked here. Lots, and I mean a lot of rain. These bearings feel decent because we just did these bearings like two months ago or a month or whatever. I haven't even driven it since I did these bearings. <laughs> I don't think I did anyway, I don't remember. Anyway. We're looking pretty good. Um, Let's see if I can figure anything out with that front wheel because we can't take it for a test drive if we don't fix that. So, well, actually, it's up in the air right now. No, it's it's tight. Something is not right. So, I'll get it uh, on the ground here. I'll get the tire off. At least get the other side on the ground. I'll uh, crack this axle nut loose and we'll see if it loosens it up. I'll uh, bring it back when I figure that part out. But hey, I don't hear any clunking from the struts or anything when I turn the wheel anymore, which we could hear because that one was bent. That's nice. That's very nice. All right, I'll bring you back when I find out more about this. Yep, it is something funny going on here. Because I backed this off and the axle was stuck, so I tapped it with a hammer. 
free as can be. So something is funny here, and I think it's that inner seal piece I put in that I shouldn't have. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to quickly pull this off here. Might as well leave the thing around and get it heat cycle through it here. Um, so I gotta pop the strut down, unfortunately. I'll, uh, I'll mark that right there so I know exactly. Because you see a little notch, I'll mark that with a white paint pen on the strut so I know where to set it so I don't have to re-level it. Pop those off. Pop this guy off real quick. Just pull the thing out. Take a look real quick. Pop the axle. Without popping it out of the transmission, we will pop it out of spindle. And... We will confirm what I think happened. So I still want to test drive it tonight. So I'll get that done real quick. I'll bring it back when I'm done or what I, whenever I find something. You know what I mean? Yep, exactly what I said happened. See this little piece here? That is stuck on here. I kind of pressed it in. And it would press it against the bearing, which would not let the bearing spin. So i got to try to get that off of there. Which might prove to be an absolute pain in the ass. And, uh go from there but that's our problem right there whoops don't do that don't don't be like me so i think i'm gonna shut the van down i'm fans have been cycling on and off so everything's working as far as that goes um does ac still work side quest um let me see max ac I don't know if I turned it on or not. Well, whatever the case, it's not on right now. So me think AC no work. Right, yeah, that's that's AC. So, rip. Now well we're gonna shut it off for now. And uh let's call that a minute. I'll see if I can get that off. If not, I'll leave it like this over my I might pop the axle a little out. It's kind of wedged on there right now, but yeah, good to know it's not the bearing. That kind of sucks though. And I didn't hurt anything. Kind of, I can see where I was wearing on the seal immediately, but I'll uh, see if I can pop that with a screwdriver or something. Got it. Kind of did a little bit of damage here. I'm gonna have to try and do quick, but I was able to pop it off here this this stupid thing right here and it was flat before as you can see it kind of coned it out so i gotta pop the axle out of here and get that out of there quick kind of clean that up i might might as well clean that up now while the axle's wedged where it is but i was able to get in there with this ultra super thin driver I was able to just pop that loose and kind of get a wedge in there but we'll see if we can straighten this out real quick yeah don't be me don't make that mistake but hey, if that's the one mistake we made, and it's funny as I kind of knew it was there too. So I'm gonna get a pliers in here and I'll straighten this. I'll kind of bite on it a little bit and I'll get that straight. <sighs> Dang it, why did I do that? That was dumb. All right. All right, and we're back together again. This guy torqued down to 35, cotter key is in. Got this guy torqued down to 180, cotter key is in. Most importantly, the wheel moves. Got these torqued down to 75. Got our dot lined up there. Got this guy tightened here. All I got to do is put the tire on it. We'll slap the hubcaps on them quick. And I will kind of maneuver this out of the driveway here. And we will take it down the road after I take a shower and clean up. Don't do this. This is bad. Very bad. Very bad mistake. Not that bad, I recovered, but you know, you know what I mean. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't be me. All right, I will bring you back when we are ready to take for a test drive. Cross your fingers, nothing else has gone wrong. I really, 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 really hope that nothing has. All right, got all cleaned up here and some clothes that aren't gonna ruin my seats. And we'll take this thing for a test drive. I gotta kind of finagle it out of the driveway here. It's buried up in the front. But warm start. Turn the lights on. Alright. Let's 
see if I can find the seatbelt buckle here. Struggling. Found it. Alright, I'll kind of got to pay attention here where I'm going first. Um, I need to do go this way. Yeah. Just pull right into the garage here. That'll allow me to straighten out here. There we go. Better. Kind of go this way. Like 20 point exit here. But I am clear now. All right. I should run the wipers and kind of clean them here. My shield's dirty as heck. Uh, these wipers are for not being used very much. They are. Almost like I got overspray on the windshield. There's no way that me spray painting that um, subframe got all over the windshield, is there? There's no way. It kind of smells or feels gritty. You can hear it. But, uh, that would be a shame. Let's have to, I guess, clean it with paint thinner, right? Okay, we got a quarter tank of gas. Good oil pressure. We're charging. And down the road we go. High beams do make a difference in this fan. Well, first thing, steering wheel is in about the same spot it was before, so I didn't ruin it too bad. And, uh, seems to drive just fine. I don't hear anything obnoxious right now. I'll, uh, I'll bring it back when we get out to the asphalt, and that's the real tell. Is do we have a shake, do we have a wobble, any noises? But, uh, initially right now it seems fine. Alright, coming up to the tar here. Oh, I forgot to mention the transmission's fine also going over bumps and stuff this doesn't feel any clunkiness or anything um, let me turn the fan off here get lined up uh, shut that off and the speedo works and everything so we did all that right I still feel kind of a bounce and we always suspected before that u-joint took a dump on us that uh one of these tires was kind of bent or something which seems to always be the case for me i always have bent wheels but uh that's not bad at all there's no uh shake in the steering wheel i can feel the bounce in the floor no noise really uh, 75 i just smoked a big bug Seems fine. Speedo says 80. I don't remember if this is five miles slow or fast or if it was dead on or not, but uh. That's about as far as I want to go with it. Brakes feel good. I hear a worry noise like a like either a wheel bearing or a or a sounds more like wheel noise than wheel bearing. 
It's coming from front right. It's a shame if I ruin that wheel bearing. But, uh, seems alright. Definitely feel vibrate. I think it's a bounce from the rear. I can't quite tell. But, uh, well, progress is it's significantly better. That is significantly better. We fixed the major problems. Now we're down to the piddly crap again, which I always hate because it's so hard to diagnose. As you maybe have seen with Gray Van already, we went through the same thing with Gray Van just recently. And it still don't have it completely worked out, but um, transmission's working, engine's working, everything's working. Well, good morning, guys. We've got full tank of gas, we're charging, we got oil pressure, uh, temp's a little low, but that's how this will always run. Actually, we have heat, and uh, we're driving the 90 caravan to work here. Uh, it's going fine, at uh, speedos five miles slow, like four, four, four and a half miles slow, but uh, based on GPS, but hey, that's fine. It keeps me from getting a speed ticket. But uh, got a set here at 75 on the speedo, and it's cruising all right. No no real shakes or vibrations at highway speed. It's got to shake at about 60, which uh, you like to say is a uh, wheel bent or out of balance. And uh, they've been balanced, so we're, we're thinking they're bent or it threw a weight, I guess. It could have. But I'm, I'm leaning towards one of these wheels. It's not quite right in combination with the wore out rear suspension. Um, I don't wonder if it's just wobbling a bit. But we'll see. Um, otherwise, it's drivable. It's just going down the road just fine. No big issues. I haven't noticed anything. So, very good. And something else I noticed quick. That uh, trip meter currently says 814 miles. And we're at 275, 236. That means uh, we've got 1,814 miles on this van since I bought it well over a year ago now. So... I guess, yeah, I guess we, uh, I drove it around for a thousand miles or so, and I made one trip down to Illinois and back or so. That's, that's 900 miles, so, uh, really I haven't driven it all that much, mostly because the suspension or the, uh, the U-joint fell apart on the way back from Illinois, but, you know, so we're, uh, gonna put some miles on it now, which is very good.